Okay, case number uh, six. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, sorry, I was having mic issues earlier. No worries. So this is another deep sample. Here. Yeah. Uh, and you can already see from scan that there's a lot going on in terms of inflammation, um, which is pretty nonspecific at first until I found uh, there was one particular area um, where I found a nice little granuloma surrounding a bunch of neutrophils. Probably right um, here once it comes in focus. This is a pretty good one. Here's a rim of epithelioid histiocytes making a big round granuloma, and in the middle, neutrophils, right? Yep. So uh, what kind of general differential do you have for this pattern? So the one that we use is CLATS, which is cat scratch, uh, LVG, atypical mycobacteria, tularemia, and sporotrichosis. Fantastic. You guys always have great little mnemonics to, to remember all of the list of things. I love it. Yeah. Basically, deep fungal or mycobacterial infection, plus a variety of other more esoteric things. So granulomas with neutrophils is infection, infection, infection until you prove otherwise. And if all my stains are negative and cultures are negative, in a case like this, I probably would want to next step go to molecular to test for, for infectious organisms. So you can send, there's a variety of labs, the uh, Centers for Disease Control offers testing like that. Um, you have to fill out some forms and often go through the state health department to do it. Also, I tend to send stuff to the University of Washington. I have no financial interest in their lab. I've just been happy with what they do and they can do like a pan a, a molecular uh, for either fungus or bacteria or mycobacteria or for all of them together and they can, can test for them. So this case um, is labeled as um, a stellate abscess, um, which is kind of this right here with the granulome around it. And in this case, it grew out mycobacteria. Um, and so let me show you an example of another one that is uh, atypical mycobacteria. And in, in uh, my practice, the, by far the most common mycobacteria I see are the atypical non-tuberculous, non-leprosy types. In my former practice in Arkansas, I saw endemic leprosy transmitted from armadillos a couple times a year. I personally, to my knowledge, never seen a real case of cutaneous tuberculosis, although I have friends in other parts of the world who see it almost every day. So a real great example of how the pretest probability changes based on the incidence of the disease in our population. So here again, neutrophils with granuloma around it. And in this one case, I remember very vividly, look, there's almost like globi, like you'd see in Lepromatous leprosy, these little circles filled with, you can even see the little filamentous kind of elongated rods here. And they were um, positive on a fight stain. So these are kind of long. I feel like a lot of times the atypical mycobacteria depends on the species. You can't tell for sure what species, of course, on the fight stain. But I feel like atypical mycobacteria tend to be a little longer than what you'd see in TB or leprosy. But again, I'm probably not nearly as expert on that as other people are. So this case, and that patient right here was immunocompromised, I remember. And he didn't actually have much granuloma, just neutrophil abscesses. So sometimes you, you usually think of granulomas for mycobacteria, which you do usually have with or without neutrophils, but sometimes um, you will actually um, you will actually not have much granuloma if you don't have good cell-mediated immunity. I think this grew out uh, Mycobacteria kansasii, if I recall, but uh, it's been a long time ago, so I might, I might be wrong about that. All right.